Dzień dobry Państwu, witam serdecznie. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to all of you joining the consecutive webinar organized by Hill Health and Environment Alliance. And we are going to present and discuss the air quality, how to make it cleaner and how to protect most vulnerable people's health against negative impact of uh, impure air. The title of the webinar is Low Emission Zones and City Inhabitants Health. This is targeted at health uh, professionals mainly, but this is not limited to this milieu because this is a topical issue for each and every one of us. Most of us live in cities. According to estimates, more and more people will be uh, moving to cities and uh, cities grow bigger and bigger and the quality of air in the cities leaves much to desire. Poland is a specific country. The air quality problem, put in inverted commas, is owed to solid fuels in home boilers, the so-called low level emissions or low stack emissions. This is mainly conditioned by the fact we move around the cities, what kind of engines we use, incineration of solid fuels, um, diesel engines and uh, vehicle fuels and similar. We are going to focus some attention on what to do to be able to breathe in the cities, to enjoy fresh air, how to plan transport policy in Polish cities. We want to tap into foreign experience as we have experts and people who boast much more extensive experience compared to our experience. And we are going to focus on solutions, what to do, how to do it, what are the barriers? Who's the most exposed? What's the impact of uh, on uh, health? We are going to start with presentations. There are there are going to be four presentations. I'm overjoyed to welcome these people in our meeting, as these are professionals, uh, or those who follow their heart and. Um, deal with air quality problems and make our cities more livable. First and foremost, I'd like to welcome our special and featured guest. Uh, well, all our guests are special. We're talking about it before webinar, and therefore I wish to reverberate my thanks for your participation in our meeting. Simon Burkett, for the first time in this kind of format of the meeting, he is a household name in London because he set up the Clean Air uh, London organization. And welcome cordially, and we look forward to you presenting and sharing best practices and discussing London's situation as London copes pretty well with uh, uh, these uh, dirty air problems. Thank you very much, Simon, for. Uh, making time for us, for giving us the Thank possibility you. to ask you questions and receive answers. The other special guest, Professor Michał Krzyżanowski, Imperial College London. Thank you very much for joining us. Professor will be the first speaker in the session. He's going to share the content with us. Professor Krzyżanowski uh, is epidemiology uh, professional. He is also a household name. He is known in Polish media and Polish scientific milieus. We'll have the presentation on NOxes in air uh, and the impact on health. Uh, we use the first name. So, hello, Michał. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are very happy to have you here this afternoon. The next speaker, Nina Josefina Bong. She is one of the fighters for clean air in cities, and it is in relation to Clean Cities campaign. Nina Josefina will tell you more about it in a moment. 
This is the initiative that goes from strength to strength. It is also recognizable and it focuses on what to do in the cities to make it better. Hello, Nina. Hello and welcome to all of you. And Kamila Kajidwowska. We had a chance to meet today's morning in Warsaw. We're discussing it further off stage. I'm happy to see you again, this time on a computer screen. She's the representative of Parents for Climate uh, Social Movement. They are the voice of people, of those who find it close to their heart because they care for our nearest and dearest and the youngest children. Parents for climate, not only do they speak about the climate and climate change, but also air pollution in different contexts. And they say what to do so that our children can enjoy fresh air and we are not exposed to any kind of uh, impact, health impact. Hello and welcome uh, on behalf of Parents for, uh, for Climate in Poland. And Jacek Karaczun, who is also with us, a communication specialist. He's going to give you housekeeping announcements. So these are rules and regulations in our meeting. Before I pass over the microphone to him, I'd like to welcome all of you, the interpreters who are with us. This seminar is interpreted into Polish and English. So whenever we speak English, you can use the Polish translation, Polish interpretation, and vice versa. The recording of today's webinar will be available in Polish and in English. So I hope that it will make it easier for you to have access to the content in both language versions. Let me reverberate the thanks for your presence. Uh, thank you for joining and watching the webinar, because the webinar's objective is to provide you the information live and in the recording uh, format, as a Friday afternoon is not always the time to join these kind of meetings. Jacek, housekeeping announcements. Uh, thank you very much. It was a wonderful presentation and introduction, Veronika. First and foremost, I'd like to request you to click on the globe button. It's interpretation or tłumaczenie, depending on the language version. Having used the icon, you can use the channel you wish to use in the course of the meeting. If you want to hear presentations in Polish, choose Polish. If you want to listen to presentations in English, choose English on the globe. Once you have selected uh, the channel that you feel comfortable with, you'll be able to hear panelists or interpreters depending on the language version whilst listening should you have any questions or inquiries or questions to the speakers you are kindly requested to use the special icon there is a q a icon you can pose a specific question in relation to a specific presentation or you can target your question at one of our speakers and this is a webinar you cannot ask a question using your microphone but throughout uh, the whole presentation the q a option is available make the most of it and uh, Veronika, who is our moderator, will be reading out the questions and the format of the meeting. First and foremost, let's start with the presentations of four panelists. And then the remaining time, like 60 minutes, will be the discussion time. We'll have questions to panelists and interactions between them. And the last thing, as Veronika mentioned, the meeting is recorded. Next week, it will be made available at our social media, both in Polish and English version. A very warm welcome to you. Should you have any technical questions or inquiries, do not hesitate to contact me with the Q&A option or in direct chat. We'll be trying to solve your problems on ongoing basis. And over to Veronika again. 
Thank you very much. I hope everything is clear. Jacek is available all the time. And the first speaker of the session, Professor Michał Krzyżanowski, who will be speaking on health, because health is the argument, the decisive argument, which makes us interested in this topic. People and all living creatures, but we are focusing on people. We all suffer from air pollution in the cities. Talking about health and talking about possible ways to limit this negative impact is very important. This is the basis. This is pivotal because it is targeted at awareness raising. It is my sheer and utter pleasure to pass over to Michał Krzyżanowski. Let's listen to the first presentation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I can hope everybody can see the first slide of my presentation. Yes, we can. As Veronika has just mentioned, the objective of my presentation is to present a scientific substantiation of our uh, interest in low emission zones in cities and why we want to uh, reduce emissions. In the very case, I'm going to focus on one of the pollutions that it's going to be um, nitrogen oxide. In the majority of uh, uh, publications, particulate matter is um, considered the core focus of attention since it's definitely a um, significant source of pollution in cities. But uh, nitrogen oxide is the specific solution, characteristic of transport, and I'm going to show it in my presentation. First, I would like to say a few words uh, about the origin of nitrogen oxides in the air. They are generated by natural sources and it applies to um, natural sources uh, such as volcanoes or penetration from the stratosphere. They dominate in the troposphere. However, what humans are exposed to and the places where they live uh, acquire nitrogen oxides from sources related to human activity. And this is also industrial activity. Among these activities and sectors, road transport uh, constitutes the highest share and it generates over 35% of uh, nitrogen oxides emitted in Poland. In Europe, it's 37%. It is followed by emissions from agricultural sector in Poland, we also need to remember uh, energy generation as uh, the uh, emission source. All uh, processes of uh, combustion and incineration nitrogen from the air blends with uh, oxide, forming nitrogen oxide, and then it is oxidated. In all processes where combustion uh, occurs, and especially high temperature combustion process, nitrogen oxides are generated. In Europe, including Poland, the emissions have been decreasing slightly throughout the last 10 years. In Poland, it happens uh, slowlier than in the rest of Europe, but such a trend has been generally observed for some years. As for nitrogen oxides, if you could please refer to the left-hand side of my slide, the annual, the mean annual concentrations are higher in places with higher traffic. You can see the line representing annual concentrations of nitrogen oxide at all traffic stations in Poland. You can also see the green line, which represents background rural concentrations, while 
the yellow plot represents for background urban and suburban concentration. You can see the differences uh, between rural and urban backgrounds. On the right-hand side, it is illustrated even better. The data relates to the situation of uh, road transport in Wrocław and the concentration of uh, nitrogen oxide measured at the traffic station, and this is a road with high traffic intensity, and you can also see data for another station. They are um, arranged uh, several kilometers from one another. This uh, diagram refers to the period between 2005 and uh, 2018. You can see the concentration of nitrogen oxide in the background and in uh, a traffic station. Moreover, we can observe strong fluctuations depending on the traffic intensity hour being the highest at the peak hours. Furthermore, we should also take into account various seasons represented, represented in the diagrams. This shows how significant uh, contributor a road transport is for air pollution with nitrogen oxides and furthermore to uh, the level of exposure to such pollution. Where does it come from and what uh, is the link between them? Our vehicles emit uh, quite significant volumes of nitrogen oxides. The amount of emissions depend on the type of engine, whether we mean petrol fueled vehicles or diesel engine vehicles. Furthermore, we need to remember that it all depends on the emission standards of the vehicles. And it also depends on the vehicle's age. In the diagram, we can see that the emissions from modern cars uh, complying with Euro 6 standard are several times uh, uh, more stringent and the emissions uh, should be lower than in Euro 3 vehicles produced after 2000, so namely between 2000 and 2005, new vehicles have to fulfill uh, more stringent requirements. More importantly is what this diagram shows, and it relates to the actual real emissions from vehicles and the difference between the expected uh, standard levels. This is the light blue part of the cloud and the actual emissions recorded uh, in traffic. Even in state-of-the-art diesel vehicles, the differences between what we would like to see, what our expectations are, and the actual situation can be significant. Diesel engine vehicles are hence uh, the primary source of emissions, especially in urban areas. Why are we so concerned about uh, nitrogen oxide emissions? Principally because they um, pose significant health risks and effects. We um, know that such effects develop slowly than in the case of particulate matter, but the US EPA confirmed a cause and effect relationship of exposure to uh, NO2 and respiratory diseases. In the case of long-term exposure, they can trigger uh, respiratory system diseases, as well as uh, cardiovascular diseases and diabetes mellitus. The uh, last uh, evaluation also confirms uh, greater knowledge of the health effects of uh, nitrogen oxides. You can see in this slide some examples of such health effects. We can see the results 
of analysis covering all mm, research pieces available in the reference areas. You can see the examples of long-term research on long-term exposure to nitrogen oxide and uh, the incidence of asthma in children. 5% increase in the odds ratio along with the higher pollution level. And uh, this increase of pollution level is uh, also around 5-6%. Uh, the next slide shows the relationship between uh, acute infections of the lower respiratory tract in children and the long-term exposure to nitrogen oxides. We can see around 9% increase in the incidence uh, for the referenced uh, values of emissions. In this slide, we refer to the incidence of asthma in adults in the case of long-term exposure to NO2. And again, you can see the odds ratio and the increase in the value. This is the result of meta-analysis covering all publications available until 2019. The most uh, recent European research based on uh, the data covering the population of around 100,000 people shows that the relationship can be even stronger than suggested by the meta-analysis. It also shows that the increase in the risk is observed at all levels of nitrogen oxide reported in Europe. This diagram shows the exposure in the cohorts. On average, it was around 20 micrograms. Uh, and here you can also see the values of the, um, the increase in the risk value. The increase in the risk of uh, occurrence of OPD is not as significant according to meta-analysis, but according to elapsed research, we can notice a significant increase in the risk of such uh, chronic respiratory diseases once exposed to nitrogen dioxide. The incidence of diabetes mellitus is also the subject of research. We have the results of research published several months ago covering the population of 41 million Americans aged over 65, where the increase in the risk of diabetes type 2 once exposed to PM and NO2 is significant. The most uh, common research investigates uh, the relationship between mortality and long-term exposure to nitrogen uh, dioxide. You can see the results of uh, 24 cohort research published until 2019. It shows 2% increase in the risk at 10 micrograms per cubic meter. Elapse research using data from a population of over 300,000 inhabitants of Europe shows even a stronger relationship observed throughout the entire range of the concentrations taken into consideration. And it also applies to nitrogen oxides. As for short-term exposure to NO2 and the relationship with the mortality rate, we can see that the concentration of nitrogen oxide increase in cities also has higher mortality rates. You can see the results of an analysis carried out for nearly 400 cities all over the world. It used the data related to 68 millions of deaths. We can see a significant increase 
in the relationship between the mortality rate and higher concentration of nitrogen oxide. It applies to the entire concentration range of nitrogen oxide. The recent data published in 2020 were used at formulating the new WHO guidelines. You can see the value of 10 micrograms per cubic meter. Uh, the guidelines, uh, the previous guidelines uh, had uh, higher values. The 24 hour average is 25 and it should be achieved at the fastest possible limitation of um, exposure to the population. What about the exposure levels in Poland? We can evaluate it based on data from monitoring. You can see the data from Polish monitoring used by the European Environmental Agency. And we can also see the comparison between Poland and other countries in Europe. Poland is not among uh, the top concentration countries as far as uh, nitrogen oxides are concerned. We are somewhere in the middle. The mean weighted uh, value is uh, 13 micrograms, but one third of the Polish inhabitants are exposed to concentrations exceeding 18 micrograms, reaching over 40 something micrograms per cubic meter. As uh, for the exposure and to the percentage of diseases, according to the European Environmental Agency's evaluation carried out in 2022, in Poland, we have 3,400 deaths uh, annually. And uh, in 2020, we had actually 3,400 3, deaths related to exposure to nitrogen oxide exceeding the WHO guidelines of 10 micrograms per cubic meter. We lose around 38,000 of years of life because of this exposure. If you remember the relation to mortality associated with particulate matters, this is one tenth of this factor, but I believe that this is quite a high number when we uh, see that there is 3,000 people on average. We can also have a look at the diseases that I was speaking about. What are the relations? One to five percent of people contracted disease owing to the fact that they've been exposed to NO2, nitrogen dioxide. There are some people who are lucky or unlucky to live in places that are more polluted, and the numbers are higher here. Asthma among adults, 11% of uh, the diseases is related to NO2 exposure. Diabetes mellitus, 5%. So this is not negligible. And territory related variety is related to the air quality, and there is uneven distribution of people contracting diseases. So in a summary, we can say that NOx's concentration increased and increased exposure. It impacts respiratory tract and diseases. It may result in diabetes mellitus. There is mortality uh, relation with uh, respiratory tract illnesses. 
and there is an impact on health even if the concentration of nitrogen dioxide is low and it is it does not have to be associated with other air pollutions this aspect is very important because 10 years ago there were doubts there were no tough scientific data related to uh, the NOx's impacts and other correlated pollutants. Now we know that it impacts solely. Three-fourths of Poland's populations live in the areas where the guidelines of uh, WHO violated. The central districts of big cities, those living next to routes at trunk roads, are exposed to twice as much as what is suggested by WHO. And we can surely say that road transport is predominant in emitting these kind of pollutions in Poland and mainly impacts health owing to the nitrogen dioxide pollutions. Thank you very much for your attention. This is end of my presentation. Thank you very much. I must admit, Anytime I listen to these presentations, anytime I read about health results analysis, I'm myself surprised. I have been a professional. I have been dealing with this, these issues for many years, but still I'm surprised, especially when we find a correlation with diabetes mellitus of, for example, short-term exposure results and uh, the WHO recommendations have become even harsher because uh, this harvest the knowledge of the recent years. This results in higher awareness of ours. We amass proofs. So thank you very much for presenting this problem. And I believe that we have thus increased our awareness, though it is really alarming when we speak about health consequences. I've got a feeling that you wanted to make a comment, Professor Krzyżanowski. I didn't want to be a scarecrow. I just wanted to present facts and figures. In the case of nitrogen dioxide, well, the amount, the quality of knowledge has increased over the last dozen or so years. We supply with this knowledge with a delay if you will, but still we are able to learn more and have more certain data related to health impact. And this is not negligible. Thank you very much. Yes, let me reverberate it. It is not our objective to scare anyone. We tap into robust analysis and scientific data, proven facts, proven research, information from many countries so that we have a comprehensive overview we do not want to scare you but we want to present you credible data pure science thank you very much again questions after all presentations and my sheer and utter pleasure to welcome or to say hello again to simon burkett from clean air in london Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much for joining our event. The topic of the presentation uh, seems to be pretty similar to Professor Krzyżanowski's presentation because we'll be speaking about low emission zones and people's health. But we know the contents of the presentation, so some um, ideas overlap but there'll be a lot of new content because this is the same thematic area presentation thank you again and over to you simon thank thank you very much and i'm uh, extremely pleased to, to join you today um first slide please thank you this um uh slide really i think um uh, takes forward the incredibly valuable presentation uh, by uh, Professor Krzyzanowski and really explains that in London, we'd, these are the sort of pollutants that we're dealing with 
and also how our problem in London has changed over the last 70 years since the Great Smog. And I'd just like to be very clear about one point to start with, which is we do need to distinguish, as Professor Krasinovsky has done, between emissions which come out of tailpipes or chimneys and concentrations such as nitrogen dioxide. So oxides of nitrogen emissions become nitrogen dioxide concentrations, and that results in human exposures, health, out, uh, health impacts and, and uh, out, uh, outcomes. Next slide, please. In London, uh, we think of, uh, I hope everyone does, uh, we think of the air as one air, uh, which has local air pollution and greenhouse gases. And the local air pollution splits between the, um, uh, the cloud of gases, uh, which includes one concentration, for example, like nitrogen dioxide, uh, and the cloud of particles, which are regulated as a lump for health and legal purposes, for example, PM 2.5. Uh, I've spent the last 17 years in that top left corner, uh, trying to achieve the uh, World Health Organization air quality guidelines that uh, Professor Krasnowski and, and others have uh, set us. Um, and just as we thought we'd achieve them in 2021, uh, we got new guidelines. So we'll be busy again uh, for a few more years. Next slide, please. Uh, uh, some of my slides have got quite a lot of detail on, but I'll just pick out a couple of points. The first is that Cleaner in London has been calling for what was originally, a, uh, we said, a Berlin-style um, low emission zone. They introduced them uh, very early on in the, the process. Uh, we've been calling for something like that in London since, uh, in fact, 2008. Um, and then since uh, 2012, when diesel exhaust was classified as carcinogenic for humans, uh, we've called for diesel bans. So that's more than 10 years ago. I think the solutions um, I will split out later um, into different types of measures. Um, and I will also refer to something called emission-based road charging, which is really a mixture of uh, pollution and um, uh, congestion measures at the same time. But I think what we really need uh, to, to tackle these challenges um, and grasp the opportunities is a mixture of political leadership, technology and lifestyle changes. And I'd like to explain what I mean by lifestyle changes. Next style, slide, please. Most uh, policy evaluations really just focus on technical measures. And in part, that's because technical measures um, uh, just, um, uh, in a sense, have um, no political costs. Um, and I think it's very important that we look at uh, both technical and lifestyle options. Uh, but what I mean by uh, lifestyle changes, uh, I'm not talking about some sort of hippie lifestyle. What I'm talking about is a spectrum of measures which rain, range from, at one end from uh, bans or charges, um, building public understanding of the problems to incentives and then adoption, for example, like seat belts. And I think we always need to consider those sorts of regulatory and other lifestyle change policies alongside the technical measures. Next slide, please. When we talk about transport measures, we do need to distinguish between road pricing or congestion measures and emission measures. Um, they are different things. They are designed to tackle either congestion or pollution, but, but each of these does have a, a secondary benefit on the other. So for example, when there's less congestion, um, vehicles might move more freely and you might get uh, fewer emissions or um, less emissions. Similarly, if you have uh, um, emission zones, uh, by excluding some vehicles, uh, you can end up with fewer vehicles on the road and therefore less congestion. But they are designed to tackle different things uh, and they have overlapping effects. So I'm going to be clear about that later. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, don't worry about the detail on this, but this is really just uh, for your record and information in future. 
which is that um, in London, we started by tackling the congestion problem as far back as, um, uh, well, 20 years ago in 2003. And since then, we've introduced a range of measures, low emission zones, and then ultimately um, the ultra low emission zone, which is based on the Euro 6 standard that um, Professor Krizanovsky highlighted. Uh, but I um, really hope that cities move eventually or as quickly as possible to emission-based road charging, which would um, uh, be a combination of congestion and pollution measures in one scheme. Uh, and that would effectively tackle where people are traveling, what time of day, and the quantity and quality of fuel that they're burning. Next slide, please. Uh, London, uh, really, we think of in three zones. Um, there is a central zone. In this slide, you can see it's the white um, circled bit at the very um, center, which is the busiest, most built up, um, uh, densest bit. There is the inner London boundary, which is the red one, which is shown there. Uh, and the green boundary is the out outskirts of London. So London really is uh, a central zone, an inner zone, and an outer outer zone. Um, and what we've seen is that we've introduced um, uh, um, um, congestion and emission measures in those different zones over time. Next slide, please. Uh, people won't be surprised to see this is nitrogen dioxide, so the concentrations, not the emissions, these are the concentrations of nitrogen dioxide. Um, this is a slide I have asked the mayor and his team to update it for the new World Health Organization air quality guidelines. These are the old guidelines um, at, set at 40, and that's now been reduced to 10. But what it does show is, is how the problem in London is concentrated around Heathrow Airport, um, the major airport, and the central area, but also very much along the roads. Um, and that, again, highlights this traffic problem. Next slide, please. Uh, for particles, the picture is slightly different. Again, this is based on the old World Health Organization air quality guidelines going back to 2006. Um, that level of 10, which is highlighted there, has been reduced to five. Um, uh, but this gives you a sense, I hope, that particles, the cloud of particles, tend to be more dispersed. Uh, they come from more sources um, than nitrogen dioxide, which is uh, really a combustion uh, pollutant. Uh, and this can include, for example, um, effects also from construction or, or agriculture. Thank you very much. Next slide. Um, uh, many of you will know, I hope uh, many, uh, many will know um, Boris Johnson, um, our former mayor of London and former prime minister. Uh, he was actually the first one to propose an ultra low emission zone, a Euro 6 zone um, in, in London. Um, uh, and he did that in 2014 for that to come in, I think it was 2020. Uh, and then Sadiq Khan then brought it forward by a year when he was elected in 2016. Uh, but we've tried to use cartoons as a way of communicating these messages. And this was probably our most, um, most popular ever cartoon out of um, uh, well over 100. Next, next slide, please. This gives you a sense of how we've tried to um, use some um, uh, pictures um, and a little bit of humor to, to get across some, uh, some fairly powerful me messages. Uh, but um, Sadiq, uh, as I say, brought forward um, uh, the central zone, that very um, uh, middle bit. Uh, and he also, after being reelected as mayor, uh, extended the um, ultra low emission zone to the whole of that north-south circular. And bear in mind, this is a Euro 6 um, standard for diesel and a Euro 4 for petrol. Um, uh, and I think it is very important to, um, to emphasize this message that we have been calling uh, for diesel to be banned in London. Uh, and that's been going on, as I say, for 10 years. Uh, and I think it is important that we set that trajectory so that people realize that that, that is the uh, um, direction of travel for London and other cities. Uh, next slide, please. 
Uh, again, don't worry about the detail here, but what the next three slides show is really just a sense of how these, uh, the low emission zone, which is really acting as a ban, um, the congestion charge and the ultra low emission zone are in, in sort of daily charges, whereas the low emission zone is a ban with very, very high fines. You can see uh, the sort of penalties I'm talking about on, on the left. Uh, but what this just shows is the inner and outer um, split. The low emission zone was implemented citywide, uh, but it has then been uh, tightened over time uh, from 2008, 2012 and 2021. Next slide, please. Uh, the T charge, I don't want to, uh, this to be a distraction, um, but uh, um, when Mayor Khan decided to bring forward his ultra low emission zone, he used a mechanism called a T charge, which uh, just brought it forward um, uh, um, in central London more quickly. Uh, but next slide, please. Uh, and this really moves from the bans, like the low emission zone, the citywide thing that was introduced as far back as 2008. This is about daily charges. Um, it's about £12.50 uh, now, which um, uh, is, uh, I guess, around 15 euros a day. Um, and what we've seen is how that has tightened uh, for different sizes of vehicles um, at different stages. Um, uh, and if you look at that uh, bit at the very bottom on the right, which is about outer London vans, cars, and motorcycles, um, uh, th that last bit, um, after all these different sizes of vehicles and central, inner, and outer London, um, this is the last group of uh, uh, vehicles to be included um, at this Euro 6 standard. Uh, and that's um, uh, going to happen, we expect, uh, on the 29th of August this year. Next slide, please. Uh, this is what other cities have been doing uh, in the UK. Um, they've been making much slower progress than London. London has had some strong political leadership, uh, but this just gives a sense of how uh, other cities have been moving down that path uh, in terms of tackling the larger vehicles and then the smaller vehicles uh, or, or tackling them all at the same time. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, I'd like to give you a sense of how this big message of saying we want to ban diesel, we want to tighten the standards continually and set a, a date uh, or time to get rid of it. Um, this carcinogenic, um, 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 these carcinogenic um, emissions, uh, but this gives you a sense of, of really um, how Londoners have in general got the message um, that diesel is um, uh, diesel's time is over um, uh, in cities. Uh, and in 2021, there were less than 8,000 diesel cars registered for the first time in the whole city of nearly 9 million people. Uh, and that's an 86% reduction uh, since 2017. And London here is, um, has been um, de-dieselifying, for want of a better word, faster than any other part of the country except for the West Midlands. And I think that's again due to this very strong message, but less than 8,000 vehicles uh, in a population of 8 million people. Thank you. Next slide. Uh, while um, uh, the low emission zone in London initially targeted particles and the ultra low emission zone by moving to Euro 6 has targeted particles and um, nitrogen oxides, the emissions of um, NOx. Um, uh, what we've actually seen um, is a wide range of action. The, we're talking today about low emission zones and ultra low emission zones. But what we've seen is a wide range of action on pollutants, um, not just nitrogen oxides. Uh, and here, for example, is just um, uh, some st health statistics that we have readily available in London which is the percentage of deaths which are attributable to these very fine particles, um, PM 2.5. Um, and London between 2018 and 2021 has really seen quite a sharp drop in these deaths attributable to this mo most deadly form of air pollution. And that's because of concerted action, I believe, on many fronts. 
um, and the only area that's um, um, gone faster than us is, is, is Southeast England. Um, so if we ne go to the next slide, Uh, this is about um, using um, clean air zones to tackle the diesel problem. Uh, and um, uh, I would just like to leave you with a very strong message, which I will have um, in the final slide, please. Which is that you know, um, ultra low emission zones, uh, low emission zones, um, they really are about um, opportunity. Um, you end up with a quieter, cleaner, healthier, happier city um, when you do uh, reduce pollution levels. Um, uh, that's what we want to do. And, and that's where we've been going as fast as we can in London. Of course, I'd like it to see us go faster. But I think the real message is we need to push um, um, uh, you know, hard on those uh, problems and encourage um, uh, the solutions as quickly as possible. So it's a real message of hope uh, that I'm sharing today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 20 years uh, fighting, struggling, taking measures towards improving air quality, and we can see the results. Uh, we focused on the nitrogen dioxides in the first uh, presentation, but PM is a significant health risk. Uh, you can see clearly how emissions dropped, how it affects uh, health, and lack of premature deaths. I am always impressed when I analyze London's example and when I see the huge leap London made towards clean air. I must admit Simon is the person who coordinated all these efforts considerably uh, and uh, devoted lots of time labor and health to make it happen. So thank you very much for your presentation. It was inspiring for us all. Inspiring because we are now in a place where London was long, long time ago. We are now at the point of time when we are about to implement uh, low emission zones. There are ongoing public consultations in London. It's about uh, to implement the low emission zone. We can see resistance, voices against, but also voices for. The awareness in the uh, society is increasing, but is it increasing fast enough to implement restrictive low emission zones? Are we, as a society, able to understand that, that this is to our benefit, for the benefit and health of our children, or are we going to juxtapose our comfort and convenience, whether it means uh, being stuck in congested cities, in traffic jams? There is an ongoing discussion. Health arguments are extremely important uh, in raising the awareness on substantiating uh, successive steps. There are various uh, Campaigns. And now we are going to focus on the Clean Cities campaign. It's going to be presented by Nina Josefina Bong from Clean Cities campaign. Nina is the coordinator of various efforts of the campaigns. She works hard towards implementing various solutions to protect our health and, as Simon said, to live, to live in clean, happy cities. Now, is going to refer to low emission zones and to the results of social consultations in Warsaw. I do not come from Warsaw, so I say we in the context of the whole uh, society. But we, as the Polish society, how do we approach the topic? Are we ready to introduce low emission zones? What do we really want? And if we have um, different goals, what are the opinions? Nina, the floor is yours. If there are any questions, including questions to Simon, uh, can be asked 
uh, after all presentations have been delivered. Thank you very much. Thank you, Veronica. First of all, I would like to mention that I'm going to share my observations in the presentation. I feel I'm not ready to present all perspectives. I will share my perspective. Uh, I have uh, the beginner's mind approach. Um, I have been working in the area of building communities, cooperatives, and I focus more on organic food and agriculture than on transport. But this topic is interesting for me, and I have, I feel I have uh, uh, quite a fresh approach to it. So I would like to present um, uh, brief, pre briefly the consultations that were carried out in Warsaw. I don't know if you can see my presentation. It's loading. I am the Clean Cities uh, campaign coordinator in Poland. It's about implementing low emission zones in Poland. I'm going to share the knowledge I acquired. Let me mention that uh, the area I'm going to talk about is uh, slightly related to political decisions. And these are typically decisions undertaken at the level of um, city councils. And that is why we consider uh, introduction of low emission zones, a political decision. They need to be implemented based on the national, international uh, obligations and regulations. It's about improving the air quality, but we also reach uh, the level of measures towards reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Whether the argument is presented at all or not depends on the major maturity of uh, the society. I'd like to share a couple of opinions. These are inhabitants and businesses' opinions on clean transport. This is what I found out whilst working in the campaign. A vast majority of the general public, public remains silent hardly do they know about the topic or they are short of time so the most vocal groups therefore will have the greatest impact on how public communication is created how uh, general public's opinion is created the arguments uh, of the proponents this is our campaign uh, where the pictures were taken. These are health-related arguments, and we try to refer to these health-related arguments. First and foremost, health of children. That has already been mentioned in the course of our meeting. Not only do we speak about cleaner, but also alternative uh, transport means and just access to space. So this is the arguments of the proponents. And these are mainly ladies rather than men that support these ideas so low emission zones is pretty feminine practically speaking why do we speak about it gentlemen were presenting the data before i work as a campaigner, so when there are scientists in the room, I'm afraid that I'm too superficial, too general. But um, this is the objective of a campaign, you need to know. Oh, I'm showing IC Global, IS Global um, webpage, Global Health Institute with its seat in Barcelona. And this shows ranking position of Warsaw when it comes to air pollution. 24th uh, from the bottom out of 900 cities. So you can see that transport related air pollutions create a huge problem in Warsaw and in Poland. It is obvious we have all already 
amassed knowledge uh, regarding particle or uh, particulate matters pollutions and uh, nitrogen dioxide uh, well it is not that popular in presentations gentlemen were already presenting the impact on mortality and general public's health i like this kind of statistical presentation how many lives we would have saved if uh, the guidelines were met this health related argument is pretty strong but my observation it is not strong enough to be vocal in arguments it is pushed to the background though it should be in foreground there are some voices of those who are the opponents of low emission zones the main argument low emission zones change nothing nothing when it comes uh, to air pollution because this is the stuck smog that uh, makes the air uh, dirty this is quite an quite often argument uh, freedom limitation argument or this is the idea of rich and well-off people because low emission zones are associated with electric car zone car zones only and another argument such zones will have a negative impact on local businesses and make them stay stagnant i've shown you the main lines of proponents and uh, opponents most people remain silent but these two groups actually shape the public de debate and public opinion they normally use social media and press communication in clean cities we speak about social justice because we realize that low emission zones are associated with the fact that most pollutants most polluting cars excluded therefore specific social groups are excluded therefore we relate to london and other examples like mobility credits when you scrap old cars you have subsidies for alternative means of transport for passenger and personal transport we focus on public transport it is more of a quality of services rather than price in poland with regards to the latter we speak about mobility and electric cars too this is one of the tools that changes the city's policy and let me refer to the question that is raised by opponents low emission zones may affect businesses as we have observed big companies have esg strategies or transport strategies they have already adjusted and and accustomed to these changes so low emission zones are not progressive enough when you think about the plans that the business already has local business local companies well it is very much associated with the opinion of the actual owner of a business there are clean cities reports and these reports also indicate that wherever there are low emission zones and wherever there are solutions that uh, support walking or cycling we can see the higher turnover in local retail and there are also the results of reports that show that small size businesses overestimates the number of people who come by car there are fewer people using cars compared to what they actually think therefore we created a letter that supports low emission zones in warsaw we try to instill a change in general thinking about transport policy to wrap it up i'd like to highlight two things health arguments are not taken into consideration when consulting with the general public when creating low emission zones the data is available as you have seen but this is not uh, 
accessible enough for the users because they are presented in a complicated way because nitrogen dioxide concentration changes in relation to the distance to the trunk roads and the data is not properly presented and sometimes low stack uh, smog is mistaken with uh, nitrogen dioxide emissions we are short of simple and easily accessible data that are easy to communicate and cities do not use these strong arguments well enough low emission zones are very much associated with electrification and there is this narrative that low emission zones uh, are to result in zero emission zones this uh, shapes uh, the so social uh, perception that is related to classes polish general public uses second-hand car that were brought in from western countries they are not uh, rich enough and therefore uh, they are not that uh, optimistic about low emission zones so these are my observations that finish my presentation thank you very much for your attention thank you very much follow clean cities campaign website nina showed just a fraction of the work you do that is a whole team i hope that health arguments will be seriously taken into consideration we try to increase awareness we try to involve you in the discussion and we have noticed that low emission zones from home boilers and stoves is much more uh, accessible but we need to have stronger arguments we need to be more vocal we need to repeat it more often we need to persuade the drivers to give up on their cars and use public transport this is an ongoing process in poland and i believe that this process will gain further momentum and will be able to boast results as the results presented from london or we might be even better i believe and now another uh, last presentation today by kamila kazidłowska parents for climate uh, parents for future in poland uh, movement as you can see in the footer of Camila. Camila, parents for future. She is a fighting mother. She represents parents. Parents who fight for better and cleaner air for their children and for all of us. Not only do we speak about uh, transport uh, pollutions, but pollutions in general, pollutions in relation to climate change. Camila, better to prevent than cure is the title of your presentation this uh, is associated with kids first campaign that draws attention to this most vulnerable group that is children as jacek wrote you can ask questions we've got some questions time allowing will try to ask them an extra questions. Now the floor goes to Camila. Let us have the presentation. You can hear me, you can see the presentation. Yes, right. It's good that I speak last because we are presenting quite a complex problem when making the presentation, uh, well, I was helped by my sons because I was wondering how to narrate it from the point of view of a parent. And you will find concrete and tangible examples. Uh, these are children, exceptional, not in the sense that they operate this way. I'm going to tell you about this in a moment. But from the point of view of children, who dwell in many families, who have parents watching this kind of webinars. From the point of view of little patients calling in Polish doctor surgeries, let's jump into the problem. Who are we? 
meaning rodzice dla klimatu, parents for the future. We are a group of adults that grows bigger and bigger, but we are associated with parents in all corners of the world. We do realize that the climate change and depletion of biodiversity and dirty environment strongly impact children's health. Responsible parents, responsible adults cannot reconcile with this. Each and every one of us has had a moment in their life which made them resolve that some of their time will be earmarked for this kind of low large-scale activities. In my case, well, I connected the dots. It was the health status of my three children and the deterioration of the environment we dwell, dwell on daily basis. I have found out this coloration. And if we overlap negative climate change results, well, the future for our children is not a bed of roses. The activities area of our movement, there is a number of them and they pertain mainly to energy, district heating, agriculture, because it is associated with the food that children eat on daily basis, education, transport. Why do we devote so much time to these activities? Well, these are most frequent diagnoses of my children and children of parents who belong to our association. These are the last year's uh, diagnosis. Allergic rhinitis, acute nasopharyngitis, chronic rhinitis and pharyngitis, acute infection of upper airways, chronic cough, dry and unproductive cough, acute pharyngitis and laryngitis, otitis media, non-specific allergy, bronchial hyperactivity, atypical, atypical autism is one of uh, very frequent diagnoses. This is very, very difficult. I'm mentioning it, but it deserves at, uh, attention, probably a separate webinar when we correlate the quality of the environment our children live in and neurodevelopmental threats. Yes, taki moment. There is a, a component uh, which is very important. My eight year, um, uh, eight year old son helped me develop this slide, which uh, makes us parents aware of the vicious circle. When you think of the annual cycle, uh, when we are in a city, uh, we take uh, children to school, they function for some time, and then something happens. They are irritated, they experience cough, then we can no longer work, children can no longer go to school. We try to contact outpatient clinic, which is not easy in some periods in Poland, especially if you want to use the public medical service. It is a real challenge. And we often hear the diagnosis I have mentioned before. And what happens? We go to a pharmacy, we purchase a battery of medications, and after two or three weeks, the child comes back to school. The question is who looks after the child when they're ill, typically moms, but happily and fortunately, many fathers also decide to join. The general care uh, of uh, reintroducing the child or catching up with uh, the material and coming back to your work after two, three weeks is typically the mother's task. Uh, sometimes uh, there is uh, the other parent who uh, is the breadwinner or there is no other parent um, present in the child's uh, life. 
So whenever I talk to parents, I discover that this is a vicious circle which prevents many families from normal functioning. I'm sorry, some sound issues. Okay, so I don't have to wait uh, uh, long. It's enough to take a stroll uh, throughout uh, our residential district to see such views. Depending on the child's age, they spend uh, time indoors or outdoors, which is not much better. Previous experience, I am keen on analyzing various social phenomena and uh, issues from the point of view of systemic and cultural solutions to find out what the situation is like in other countries. Uh, car holism or vehicle holism is a problem in my country. A car is still the uh, showcase of your material uh, status. And although we still, although we live in a different period, it's unbelievable for, for millions of Poles not to have at least one car and use it whenever possible. Low level of uh, knowledge on how the humans impact the environment and how the environment impacts our health. This is extremely uh, important. It is not mentioned in the educational system. That's why we never had a chance to learn how significant our impact on the natural environment is and vice versa. The issue is related to um, mobility to adverse transport habits. There are many publications devoted to the subject matter in Poland on how public transport in the 1990s and afterwards uh, was dismantled. And that was coherent with the vision of a car for everybody. Now we pay a huge uh, price for it. Furthermore, there are no central regulations. It's very good that there is an ongoing discussion on low emission zones, but uh, unfortunately, it's a bit too late. There is the general acceptance for uh, leaving a car with your engine on when you're uh, just giving a lift to your child to school or kindergarten. Now it's not well seen. And we need to uh, remember that uh, somebody may um, tell us to, to uh, turn the car engine off. So generally speaking, uh, there is public consent for uh, poisoning. Furthermore, we must not forget the unequal share of uh, caregivers' roles. Uh, typically in uh, Poland, these were women who were looking after uh, children, after the elderly, after uh, members of family suffering from chronic diseases. That is why there was no need to enter into the dialogue on the space I previously mentioned. My children are coughing again. No wonder children in Poland breathe the most polluted air in Europe and hence it causes asthma, cancers and problems with concentration. What can the parent do? You need to require renewable energy sources and not using polluting uh, power generating sources, better cure than treat. Indeed, children are most exposed to negative impacts of polluted air in Poland. This is an example of uh, an activity we undertook spontaneously. It is no secret that we decided to contact Heal uh, Poland for the substantive support in our campaign 
uh, because parents uh, reached the limit. We know, we are aware that we uh, poison our children systemically. We need to fight it and we need to be equipped with knowledge and tools. That's why I would like to thank Hill Poland for sharing their support. We are also other uh, stakeholders joining our campaign and I share the story of my family as well. The poster you can see in the slide is related to uh, stack uh, pollution, but we were mainly concerned to disseminate the message that we need to approach fighting with pollutions from the uh, transport and uh, heating uh, generation sectors. We prepared posters together with HEAL and we wanted to uh, disseminate them in schools, kindergartens and outpatient clinics all over Poland. The posters uh, provided information for parents what can be done uh, when the air quality is not sufficient and how to check it. Furthermore, what systemic solutions can be used. The worst thing is that the systemic solutions do exist because we are uh, the uh, EU member, but they do not exist in an average parent's awareness. There is still, uh, this problem is uh, very generally uh, treated. So it's not about uh, boosting parents for purchasing another uh, syrup to alleviate cough, but we uh, suppose it is most significant to exert pressure on decision makers to implement measures reducing uh, air pollution. We must not forget fossil fuels for which we pay a double price. They generate the smog which uh, impairs the development of our children, and it also generates uh, pollution constituting hazard for the future. Camila, sorry, I would like you to uh, wrap up because we are uh, running out of time. There are questions in uh, the chat. I would like to give the time for answering them. We'll would be very happy to stay longer, but we cannot expect it from everybody. And I can see you have many more slides left. So if you could uh, please try to conclude. Okay, so one sentence for each slide. Typically, there is no time, knowledge, uh, tools, or uh, will of pediatricians to discuss the reasons for children's diseases with parents, not to mention significant financial uh, problems. This is the example on how the accumulated pollution and air quality affect the health condition of uh, one of my sons. We live in a polluted area, and this is... Uh, PM pollution. Ulek uh, commutes using public transport. He waits at bus stops uh, and breathes uh, polluted air. He is now uh, being diagnosed for asthma. Uh, for me, uh, it's quite surprising that uh, the impact of air pollution is typically not considered as the reason for asthma development in children. The message we often hear uh, at diagnosing is that it's not investigated in Poland. We, as parents, are taken aback by this fact. Uh, we hope it's going to change following our communication to the Minister of Health, and we are also looking forward to training and campaigns of the Ministry of uh, Health to inform how air pollution affects uh, everyday functioning. We do not wait until it's too late. Uh, now we have uh, some symptoms, but afterwards 
uh, we can expect some diseases that were mentioned by Professor Krzyżanowski. That was uh, the case of uh, Ella Roberta. I had the opportunity to meet uh, several times Rosamond, her mom. She admitted that as a result of lack of sufficient information, she did not take any measures to uh, reduce her daughter's exposure to smog. She used to live in London, close to high traffic uh, road, and it was correlated with asthma attacks. One of them was lethal. Now, Rosamond uh, takes measures to inspire parents like us because she focuses on changing the uh, regulations. As parents for the climate, we act, and this is coherent with the guidelines of experts and the European Commission. We need urgent systemic uh, modifications in power engineering, heat generation, transport, agriculture, but education is also pivotal. We try to share the message across to politicians to encourage and to stimulate action. However, there is still high concern that Poles are not ready for implementing such policies. I suggest that uh, our um, participants, viewers, can read your postulates at the website. I'm sorry to interrupt, but since uh, in the chat uh, our speakers are answering the questions, I would like to thank you for the answers. Camila, a short wrap-up uh, of the most important points of your presentation. We'll share the presentation, don't mind, and then we'll have some time for some short questions. Yes. Most exposed are children, pregnant women, parents, grandparents. Therefore, we highlight that we are parents, the adults. Therefore, we should use double strength to introduce low emission zones. Ask others to be part of uh, social consulting because they impact the shape of such a low emission zone let's reverberate it let's highlight it whenever we can we cannot uh, switch traffic jams of uh, fueled cars to electric cars traffic jams because low emission zones uh, are the chance to change cities infrastructure that serve that is ben of benefit to all of us and this changes the climate because we still remember that we generate electricity from coal and another argument supporting low emission zones and limitation of passenger cars use there is high price of crude oil which comes from non-democratic countries if you can wrap up, I'd like to ask just one question to finish. As a wrap up, I'd like to address pediatricians. I want them to hear it. They might have a chance to watch it. We do recognize your activities. We know that you work really hard, but this is our appeal. Now, give information to parents on the reasons for many illnesses that children suffer when visiting your surgeries. Costly medicine cures it for a moment, but the root cause remains. We've tried and tested. Parents' uh, awareness makes miracles. So I'd like to encourage all of you to watch it to listen to voices of parents. We have produced short video, just scan the QR code and you can watch a short movie that features parents discussing low emission zones and clean transport benefits. We debug a lot of myths. Let's not waste this chance. Prevention is better than cure. This should be a guiding 
beacon for each and every one of us and for doctors too. Thank you very much. Visit the website of Rodzice dla Klimatu, Parents for the Future. Do apologize for being the timekeeper. We can sit here for hours because the questions are of pivotal importance. But despite this fact, we need to stick to our time schedule. We have overstayed our uh, webinar time uh, a bit. So three to five minutes. Can you possibly answer two questions? In the chat window, I can see questions popping up. There are also answers. Let's start with something that we have uh, received from some people uh, who put the questions whilst registering. Free of charge public transport. Is this a good solution for the cities? Has this been tested and proven effective? Will it make us switch from passenger cars to public transport uh, vehicles? Any of you willing to take the floor and have your say on this topic? We are interested in London's perspective. Simon, if you could refer to this question starting first. Um, thank you very much. It's, it's a very good question. Uh, I think we need to do two things. If you think of it as a seesaw, um, uh, what we need to be doing is discouraging uh, the most, <laughs> excuse me, dis we need to be discouraging the most polluting vehicles also tackling building emissions and agriculture. And we want to be encouraging uh, lots of those positive measures, for example, um, use of public transport, but let's not forget walking and cycling as well. So we need to discourage bad things and encourage good things. And I think that's the approach that we need. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Any of you willing to take the floor and refer to public transport that is available free of charge in the cities? How about me, Nina? I don't have a comprehensive set of analysis, but my observations, this transport is not a solution. High quality transport is required. Whenever investments are required, still these investments will be lower for inhabitants rather than use of a car. But depends. it all depends on cities' policies. There was one top-level uh, officers in Warsaw who said it's too easy to drive a car in Polish cities. So it's the first. And next question. Ursula Stefanowicz, a Polish Ecological Club. She attracts our attention to the fact that when we present uh, low emission zones or school streets and similar solutions or any other forms that limit the possibility to use our own passenger car, the reactions are quite abrupt on the other side. We are charged because uh, they say we want to take a step back in development. We deprive people of freedom. We make life difficult. We take away something important because the status of a car in Poland is pretty high. People don't believe health arguments. They believe this is exaggeration. There is a hidden agenda or a lobby. This is my digression uh, related to this question. How to respond to these arguments? how to respond to these abrupt reactions. Can we mitigate them or is it going to be a lengthy process that continues until we transfer and disseminate knowledge in a proper way? Any of you sharing your reflections? I'm eager to listen to voices from outside Poland. Simon, if you could have your contribution and then some other speaker. I think the, the lesson of um, uh, for example, the great smog 70 years ago, the greatest lesson uh, was that we need to take action. Uh, and that action is about trying to clean up our streets. Um, uh, moving around is extremely important. Um, uh, I understand the, the point of view of um, uh, private uh, vehicle owners, uh, but ultimately many people um, should share those roads, uh, which includes public transport and also those who want to walk or cycle. Uh, but in around schools, it's very, very important or healthcare facilities uh, um, to reduce pollution levels. Thank you. 
Dziękuję bardzo. Może Thank you very much. Profesor Krzyżanowski. Yes, it's pretty late, so in a nutshell, it's a lengthy educational process. We need to understand what we fight for. We need to change awareness and awareness change does not happen overnight or even takes years to change. So administrative measures are of great importance, sometimes against the will of most of inhabitants. Simon may confirm it. The central zone in London, it was not supported by a vast majority. So people had to learn that it works. So this should be this kind of activity that we are speaking about, top to bottom uh, and bottom up activity dissemination of knowledge and we should be looking for the p places that are easiest to change like around schools because care uh, for children's health is much greater there compared to the average we should find the places where these activities uh, can be introduced which set the basis slowly but surely we will go through um, without regulations it will be difficult Thank you very much for your answers. As I mentioned, we could speak about it at length, but I wouldn't dare to ask you to stay longer because we overstayed uh, the initial time allocated for the meeting. Thank you very much for your knowledge uh, that you've shared, for sharing your perspective. Each presentation has made a huge contribution towards understanding it shared knowledge and good examples that uh, should be our guidelines that should be included into our activities and i hope this knowledge is valuable for you there are years to combat for it to introduce low emission zones in poland let's hope we'll be using good examples examples of london for example and the things that happened over the last uh, 20 years. Let's hope that health will be highlighted often. Children's, teenagers, grandparents, well, children have limited possibilities to engage in uh, movements, but we'll be speaking about it, knowing how harmful bad transport is. We'll be trying to convince the lawmakers who will be making good decisions. Thank you very much indeed for your participation. The recording will be available on our YouTube channel. We'd like to share it with those who watch it, who have uh, presented. We'll be sharing the presentations too. Thank you very much. And may you enjoy the day and the evening. Breathe in some fresh air. Good luck, Poland. Be ambitious. Bye. 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 Thank you all.